Abortion is once again legal in Iowa just two days after an abortion ban at six weeks was signed into law. A judge has just struck down these restrictions, and I really should call them protections because they're protections of the unborn. And abortion is now legal up to 20 weeks in Iowa. Yeah, Iowa is a really interesting case because you're seeing this live battle play out. I mean, when Governor Kim Reynolds went to sign this new legislation, which successfully passed the Republican-held House after a special session, uh, there was a judge saying, you know, I am actively in the middle of a challenge on this, and I can't, it would be flippant of me to rule on this without giving it consideration. So that law went into effect on Friday, and he came out uh, early this week and said, you know, actually, we can't go forward with this. We're going to revert back to our 20 week ban on abortion. Uh, can, the legislation in, in question is a six week ban. There are certain exceptions for uh, rape, incest, uh, 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 fetal uh, viability is, if it's in question or if it's, it they couldn't survive outside the womb and uh, mother's health. What I find interesting is you're seeing Iowa itself split apart. And of course, for us, I was significant because it's an early primary state. Uh, what happens in Iowa, especially during election cycle, is often viewed as uh, a magnifying glass on the rest of the country. Mm. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And I think we're going to see a lot more of this. There's going to be a massive clash there. Uh, I'm curious to hear your perspective on this. Once again, as somebody coming over here from England, what are the uh, laws and social conventions like surrounding abortion? One thing you hear all the time from American progressives is that we are just this backwards, far right, theocratic nation relative to the enlightened Europeans who just let anything that the progressives want happen. But especially prior to Roe, if you actually looked at uh, abortion laws in Europe, you would find that many of them were actually more strict than the laws that you would have, especially in blue states in the U.S. I am sorry to rain on your parade a little bit. Um, that's not the case in how it plays out in England. So, in, oh yeah, no, the, the English case is legally it's twenty-four weeks to spot, uh, other than if you can have a, a health example that can justify it going further. And can I just interject? Ask one question. Yes. When you say health example, so in the United States, like like for example, there are certain blue states where like up until the point of birth, which yep. is why I'm saying that it that's so much harsher than what you have in Europe. But what I want to ask you about with this legal exception for the case of the life of the mother, one thing that happens in the U.S. is they will use things like depression or a poor mental health outcome to justify that is it the same in it's exactly the same in england yeah oh, the, 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 we we have far fewer abortions in the united states um as a proportion of population as well but it, it still does happen and abortion in the uk is unfortunately one of those things that's just declared beyond reproach i was once once called um anti-english because i was against abortion because it's just been settled law for for, for how long anti-english huh yeah so i not want english babies aborted yeah i know yeah radical <laughs> position i suppose yeah, yeah. um one of, one of the disturbing things that's happened and this has happened um, both because of the rising prominence in the polls of the Labour Party after their stinking defeat in 2019. They're now getting a bit more bold because they know they're probably going to win the next election anyway. And after the UN AIDS principles, which I don't know if you guys know about. No. Okay, I'll explain that in a minute because that's a really dark rabbit hole. Um, but we recently had a debate in Parliament um, among the MPs. This isn't tabled legislation yet, but about a right to an abortion in a British Bill of Rights that is being drafted after Brexit. And Stella Creasy, who is a Labour MP, she sits on the, the Women's Council. Um, she had gone from, I think it was two years ago, bringing her infant into the House of Commons, even though they have daycare, which I'm against. Um, but she could have put it in the crash in time. She made a deliberate point to bring the baby in, went from that to arguing to no restrictions on abortion and a right to abortion codified within the British Bill of Rights in law. And so they're getting pretty bold for that. Um, and one of the reasons I think this is the case is because the UN on International Women's Day this March put out their 21 AIDS principles to govern um, sexual health, drug law, things like that. And among these things were um, abortion up until the point of birth has absolutely no restrictions oh. for all member states. Um, Downstream from that, it was the decriminalization of all drugs, including, uh, who was the fella from Lance from, was it Lance from the Surfs? Who yeah, said that, um, Lance was Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah um, that's the UN's position now. You should be able to take drugs and suffer no penalties while you're pregnant. Um, all gender affirming care for all ages. And they also said that there are some cases where children may be mature enough to consent. Disgusting. Yes. And, Disgusting. Yeah. And, and so this is something that is coming for most countries, probably in Europe as well. Um, that's the case in the UK. Not How does fun. British law work? Like, uh, if you're talking about like York, Northumberland, do they have their own sets of rights, like state rights? Like no, got no, no. It's all centralized. It's it's just national to the country. Is, is that also like federal police everywhere? Like in yeah, yeah. It's all, uh, so we have we have the Met Police in London um, who operate from a slightly different commissioner. I think each each area has commissioners, but we can like 
central to the government. They can set general policing law. The police in England are mad as well. I nearly got arrested last year outside Conservative Party conference. Um, there was a video that, that did, did the rounds. What ended up happening was um, I went outside to film a street preacher who was arguing with some young girls who were arguing in favour of abortion just outside the secure zone. And I was filming it and a local journalist came up to me and said, what do you think of this? And I went, I've just arrived on scene. What's even happening? And she said, this gentleman here is saying that the LGBTQ plus community are unnatural according to scripture. And I said, right, well, I haven't heard any of this, but you know, I've just been speaking to the LGB Alliance guys in there and they separate sexuality and gender. So that's part of the debate you have to parcel out. And the TQ plus might be harbinging something more insidious. And I said, have you heard of Gail Rubin? And before I finish my thought, uh, an inspector who had been bussed in from, from Kent to Birmingham, which is, you know, Kent to South, Birmingham to the North, that's where the conference was, ran up to me, waved his finger in my face. Um, he had to go on his tiptoes because he's rather short. And he said to me, right, um, if you continue this conversation, I'm warning you, I will arrest you under the public order offence bill because you have insulted this woman's sexuality. Because he'd overheard the word insidious, not overheard the conversation properly. And he just said, do you understand what I'm saying? And I, when I tried to clarify and ask questions, he said, this is not about questioning. I'm telling you what's happening here. I got surrounded by 10 other police officers, arms folded, riddled to tackle me. And one guy had a shoulder mounted camera recording the entire thing. And what they do in the UK is if you are reported for like an offence but it's not criminal offence. You'll be registered on the non-crime hate incident registry, which means there's a black mark against your name that you never know exists, and if employers do a background check on you, even if you've wow. been criminally charged, that will come up, and you will be turned down for jobs without ever knowing it. So I, I had to rely on some uh, a lovely gentleman by the name of Harry Miller. He used to work for Fair Cop, now... Um, bad law project and he he got confirmation that i wasn't on that registry we filed a complaint to the police but it went nowhere because they protect their own and so yeah england's england's undoubtedly a, a very uh, progressive captured country can i ask you do you feel like there's a cultural difference in the different regions like northern england has a different attitude towards these things than maybe so the south because that's what mm -hmm. i feel uh, is at least the stereotype in america that, that we're very regionally divided uh, you'll hear West Coast versus, you know, conservative Texas, perhaps. Uh, we have something called the Red Wall in England. And that was created because when Margaret Thatcher was in power, she decided to disband in uh, industries that she thought were defunct, mainly things like coal mining. And they had been longstanding sources of community wealth, intergenerational prosperity for years, even though they weren't generating as much. And when she ripped that out, um, she did a lot of battle with the unions as well. And so that's that's made them more union-ish, and so they voted Labour as, as a part of their identity. She didn't really replace it with anything. And so up north, um, you know, there's a bit of north-south antagonism. They, they, we call them northern monkeys, they call us southern pufters, and we, we get along with a bit of, bit of solidarity against, against any other country that, that wants to try their luck. Um, but they have resentment of the south, because they see politics as too centralised in the south, and they see it as it left them behind. And th this was the big difference with Boris Johnson in 2019 as well, because uh, the, the north overwhelmingly voted for Brexit, thinking that we're sending too much money over to the European Union. It could be reinvested here. And Boris Johnson said, right, if you guys lend me your vote, I'll do that. I'll, I'll do a program called Leveling Up, which basically means you'll get new rail infrastructure, you'll get new job opportunities, we'll do regional investment. And the Northerners voted for him. And then they voted, obviously, for Boris because they, they liked him on character. You know, he used to be the London mayor. He got stuck on a zip line. He'd wave little flags. He was like Mr. Bean. You know, people, people thought he was fun. Um, then COVID hit. Lockdowns happened. We were imprisoned in our home for multiple years. And Boris, who professed to be a libertarian, squandered all the money away on that and then started partying while we were all locked in our homes and that all got leaked and it was a big scandal. Yeah, I, I've heard about this. The mm -hmm. the League of Political Leaders partying in England. What is the fallout from that ban? Uh, Boris Johnson got scapegoated from it. Matt Hancock, who was the health secretary, who was having an affair with one of his aides at the time that oh was called on CCTV, um, he lost his job. But he's... He really needed to social distance. Well, you know? yeah, yeah, I mean, um, if you if anyone ever sees a photo of Matt Hancock, I, I feel deeply ashamed because he was doing better with his love life under lockdown than I do. And he is not a good looking bloke. Um, but he hasn't lost his place in the party. Like Boris Johnson's basically just been kicked out of the commons. His seat is up for re-election. Um, well, one of the GB News hosts, Lawrence Fox, is currently running in that. So I wish him luck. But he really um, was the scapegoat. I mean, they yes. said everything was his fault. And I feel like the from my observational standpoint, the party sort of let him... Uh, pay for their sins. Yeah, take the fault. Yeah, and, and and all of the health executives that got all the calls wrong got knighthoods. Um, Gavin Williamson, he was the education secretary who repeatedly locked down schools, but despite being campaigned not to, um, he resigned from his post for a particular reason that doesn't come to mind right now. But he resigned in disgrace and then got a knighthood from it. It's like they're just buying people's silence. What's it's, the what's the knighthood do? Uh, it's just a title which confers upon you the sort of you have been endorsed by the it's regime. It's honorific. Do you get yeah. money for it or anything? A yearly no, stipend? Think, no, no, I don't think you get. You get Can you stipend. like kick people off of their land or any of that crap? No, I don't okay. think you get any titles. But it, it's basically like a Gotta regime be a stamp of to approval. Do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
uh, or or and that's that's funny thing as well. Uh, Boris kept trying to appoint his dad a member of the House of Lords <laughs> repeatedly, and, and Rishi Sunak shut that down. But but that's absolutely to your point. Rishi Sunak is the Prime Minister right now. He wasn't elected. Like the when Boris went, the members chose Liz Truss. Now Liz Truss is dim as a two watt bulb. She's she's not great, but. She was too dumb to be on side of the global project. What we have is a bit of a split in the Conservative Party right now. We have the neocons. They both share goals on Ukraine, but for different reasons. Um, the, the neocons are more Cold War. The global faction are more like, we want to line BlackRock's pockets. Um, Liz Truss was firmly in the neocon camp. And she wanted to majorly, well, not majorly, minorly cut taxes, right? Rishi Sunak was a tax and spend guy. Um, he was the guy that printed all the money as the chancellor during COVID. He did he did the equivalent to stimulus packages. This bankrupted the country. Um, but they spun the narrative as to where it's only Ukraine and the pandemic. It wasn't Rishi Sunak's fault. The members voted for Liz Truss, overwhelmingly. Liz Truss gets in, and she's the shortest serving prime minister in history because she wanted to do like a 1% tax cut. And she announced it on a Monday. The Bank of England uh, the, the published the sort of stats on the guilt market on the Friday, and the news didn't hit till the Monday, and it coincided with the fact the Bank of England realised they'd run out of money. So they used Liz Truss's policy as a scapegoat, and we know this because, like, Rishi Sunak immediately started spending more money, and this suddenly wasn't going to break the market. How weird. And so they got their man in. They got him in by the back door, despite him being utterly implicit in, in the parties and the economic damage done under the pandemic. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.